Hello, I'm Mark from excelofthegrid.com and in this video we're looking at how we can use relationships to combine multiple tables together in a pivot table. You see, when most people use pivot tables, they copy the source data into a worksheet and then carry out lots of VLOOKUPs to get the categorization columns into the dataset. Once they've done that, the analysis can then start. But we don't need to do all those VLOOKUPs anymore. Instead, we can build relationships that combine multiple tables to automatically create the lookups for us. The ability to create relationships has been around in Excel since 2013, yet most users don't even know that this feature exists. Here on the screen you can see our example data. We have three data sets. We have the sales data, the sales rep data, and the product data. Now these data sets could all be on separate worksheets, but for the ease of demonstration, I've included them together in one worksheet here. The sales data section contains the transactional information, and this is often referred to as a fact table, while the sales rep data and product data include the categorization by which we want to analyze the transactions. These are often referred to as dimension or lookup tables. So our goal is to create a pivot table which shows this transactional data by product and branch without using any formulas. So let's start by turning each one of our data sets into a table. So we'll select any cell within that data set. Then I'll click insert and table. Excel brings up the create table dialog box and it recognizes that our data is in cells A1 to E21. We have a header and Excel has also recognized that. So let's click OK. Our data has now changed into a blue striped format and this is a visual indicator to help us to see that this is now formatted as a table. We don't have to stick with those colors. We can come up to table styles up here and choose a whole variety of formatting. I'm just going to stick with the blue color for now. But one thing we do need to do is to go and name our table. So let's give it a meaningful name. I'll go for sales data and press return. Next, we go and change our other data sets into tables as well. So I'll select a cell in there, insert and table. It's found our range and it's found our header row. So I'll click OK on that. And I'm going to call this sales rep data. Then our last table, select a cell, insert table, click OK on the create table box. And this table I'm going to call product data. And I'll press return. And now we can move on to creating the relationships. So from the data tab, over here in the data tool section, I have this small icon, which depending on the width of your screen, it may have the word relationships next to it. I'll click that. And now the manage relationships dialog box has opened. I'll click new, which has opened the create relationship box. Now I don't think that these descriptions are particularly clear. So let me just give you a bit of a steer. So the first box of table, this is the table containing the transactional values that we want to analyze, or the facts table, as you might call it. The column foreign dropdown, this is the name of the column from the transactional values table, which we want to look up from. So if you're in a VLOOKUP mindset, then this would be the column containing the lookup value argument. The word foreign is database terminology to indicate that this column can contain duplicate values. The related table dropdown, this is the table containing the categories that we want to analyze the data by. So the lookup table or dimension table as you might call it. Next to that is the related column primary. This is the column that we want to pair with the foreign column that we selected above. And if we are in a VLOOKUP mindset, then this would be the first column in the table array argument. And the word primary in here is also database terminology. It tells us that the column must contain unique values. For the column and related column dropdowns, 
those columns don't need to have a related name. However, if we're setting up the data ourselves, it's useful if they do have the same name, just to keep things simple for us. So let's select our data here for table. I want the sales data. And then if I select the sales rep ID, then that will link with the sales rep data. And then the sales rep ID. And then I'll click OK. So as you can see, that relationship has now been created. But actually, we've got three tables, which means we can create the next relationship. So I'll click New. And again, it's the sales data. But this time we want to match it with the product table. So that'll be the product ID. And then in the product data, again, it will be the product ID. I'll click OK on that. And now we have our two relationships. So let's click Close on the Manage Relationships window. And now we can create the pivot table. And I'll go to Insert. From the Pivot Table drop down, I can select From Data Model. Depending on which version of Excel you've got, you might click Create Pivot Table. And then in that box, you can then select to use the data model. And I can choose the existing workbook. And let's just come down to cell G10 and then click OK. Now you'll notice that in the pivot table fields box, we actually have all three tables listed. So let's expand our product data. And then we can select the product in the rows the sales rep data, I can select the branch in the columns. And finally, in the sales data table, I can drag value into the value section to create an implicit measure of sum of value. That's now created a pivot table. So in the rows, we have the product, across the columns, we have the branch, and the data in the middle is the sum of the values. So that means we've just combined three tables together in a pivot table without using a single VLOOKUP formula. Now, just one thing to note, and that's if we have duplicate values in any of our dimension tables, it will cause problems when we refresh our pivot table. So for example, if I were to copy that value there and paste it again down there. So I've got two values of HAN, 0, 0, 004. If I click data and then refresh all, as you can see, it brings up an error message, and that's because that table now contains duplicates. So let's clear that. Clear contents, and then drag up our table corner. And then when we click refresh again, there you go, there's no problems with our data structure. Now, what you probably didn't realize is that you've just used the Power Pivot Engine in Excel. Now we've not opened Power Pivot, we've not installed Power Pivot. All we've done is use the standard Excel interface. However, now that Power Pivot is integrated into Excel, it means that by using the relationships feature, we're actually using the Power Pivot tool. So let me just show this to you. So if I go up to the Power Pivot ribbon, so I've enabled my Power Pivot add-in. If I click on that and then choose Manage, that opens up Power Pivot. And from the diagram view, there we have our data. So let's just turn that into a star schema. So we have our dimension tables at the top and our fact tables at the bottom. Well, that's it. In this video, we've created a pivot table from separate tables without using any formulas, something which wasn't possible before Excel 2013. That's all for this video. If you'd like to watch some more of my videos, just click on one of the links that you can see on the screen now. Also, don't forget to subscribe and get notifications so that you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Mm -hmm.